Marvel vs. Capcom 4 is something every sane human on the planet wants. After the sheer disappointment of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, it's hard not to long for a better game. Since I'm in quarantine and have nothing better to do, I decided to take it a bit further than just longing. I cracked open my Photoshop and I got to work on a concept for Marvel 4. First, let's talk about mechanics of the game. There were actually some really cool gameplay features in Infinite, and anyone who's played the game can agree. Free tag replacing assists is probably the best gameplay move the series has ever made. It basically lets you make your own assists and gives the players what feels like an endless amount of freedom in creating pressure and combos. Between that and Infinite's surprisingly good online, there's a decent amount to steal from that game for Marvel 4. Something else we can steal from Marvel Infinite are the characters. In the roster, I'm bringing back all of the newcomers to Marvel Infinite except for Winter Soldier. Nothing against the guy, I love his movie and everything, but in my opinion, he's the least important of the new Marvel characters, and we really needed those roster slots for something much more important. So, aside from the Infinite characters, who else is coming back? I'm so glad you asked. Here's the roster I picked for the game. I wanted 52 characters, and to accomplish this, I picked 40 characters from either Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite or Marvel vs. Capcom 3. If you have finished movesets for characters that people are happy with, why completely change them? All that does is limit the amount of characters you can include in the base game. Remember, the more characters we have, the more bang for your buck you get with Marvel vs. Capcom 4. It's pretty counterproductive to redesign the entire roster from the ground up. That's how you get situations like MK11. Even though you're 11 Mortal Kombat's deep into the series, your base roster only has 25 characters, one of which is a pre-order bonus even though he's part of the base game and involved with the story. After Marvel Infinite's biggest criticism was the lack of fan-favorite characters, that sounds like the easiest way to get people pissed off with Marvel 4. So yeah, let's not do that to ourselves. I really want a similar situation to Smash Ultimate. Even though it won't quite match everyone is here, most of them are, and that's more than enough to please longtime fans, especially when a solid chunk of the returning characters are X-Men and Doctor Doom. Also, how the fuck did a Capcom crossover game ship without Akuma and Phoenix Wright? I'm not mad, Capcom. I'm disappointed and I'm mad. What the damn hell were you thinking? How could you do this to my boy? And where was Virgil? Do you guys have any idea which characters your fans actually like? You put in Spencer over Akuma, Virgil, and Phoenix Wright? Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, I'm getting heated just thinking about it. We need to <laughs> we need to move on. Anyways, let's talk brand spanking new characters and characters that haven't been in the game since Marvel 2. It's been 20 years since they've been playable, so I'm including them with the newcomers at this point. For Marvel, I went with Cyclops, Gambit, Psylocke, Star-Lord, Daredevil, and Loki. The returning Marvel vs. Capcom 2 characters I picked were all X-Men because, come on, the X-Men are a base team and they deserve it. Cyclops, Gambit, and Psylocke being announced would blow the dick off of every single Marvel fan in existence. If you want to make people happy after excluding all of the Fox characters, if you want to win people back after getting rid of all the X-Men, these three characters are how you do it. In combination with Wolverine, Storm, Deadpool, Sentinel, and Magneto in the base roster, not only are these characters a love letter to Marvel vs. Capcom history, but they're a love letter to Marvel history. And honestly, that's something the Marvel vs. Capcom games have been missing, is the sense of legacy and the celebration of the fact that this series is t over 20 years old. This is one of the original crossover games. It might be the first big crossover in video game history. We have to celebrate that. And that's why I picked the characters that I did. 
As for the actual newcomers, I went with the most popular Marvel characters I could think of that weren't in the game. Daredevil, Star-Lord, and Loki not being an MVCI kind of stunned me. You know, we all knew before the game launched that it wasn't going to have X-Men because they made that very clear. So I was like, okay, I can just rock out with Team Lawyers. I'll be Daredevil and Phoenix Wright. I'll still miss my X-Men characters, I love them, but I can live happily if I get a dope-looking Star-Lord or Daredevil. And then MVCI said, plot twist, everybody's ugly, and there are hardly any new characters. So I added them in the game because I thought they were guaranteed picks for the last one. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 agrees with me too, they put them all in as base roster. So if you ask me, their inclusion in a future Marvel vs. Capcom game is inevitable. As for the Capcom side, I only have two returning characters in Jill Valentine and Captain Commando. Jill wouldn't be the MVC3 slash Resident Evil 5 version. She'd be more akin to her Resident Evil 1, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, or Resident Evil 3 counterpart. For the sake of recency, I'm going to have her RE3 look with maybe a classic alternate. But Chris has been in two games now, and I really miss Jill Valentine. She's one of my favorite females in video games. It'd just be really nice to have her back. Captain Commando is literally Capcom. I mean, who else do you include to get the longtime Capcom fans hyped? If there's a character that would instantly make Capcom fans forgive everything Capcom has been doing with their fighting games, it's Captain Commando. Especially if you make the game look good. And speaking about making the game look good, I really do expect a lot from this game in terms of aesthetics. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which I mentioned earlier, had an amazing art style for a not huge budget. They made it look like a comic book, a modern comic book, without blowing their budget, and it's easily one of the best looking superhero games I've seen. So I would love to see something like that from Marvel vs. Capcom. But getting back to the characters, let's talk about the rest of the Capcom newcomers. As for the rest of the brand new babies, I went with Leon Kennedy, Nero, Jury, and Batsu. Leon and Nero are to appeal to modern Capcom fans with the success of Resident Evil 2 Remake and Devil May Cry 5. That's also why Monster Hunter returned from MVCI, but I figured you guys would assume that. And while they do appeal to new Capcom fans, Thanks to the original Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 4, and Devil May Cry 4, they're also very appealing to longtime Capcom fans. They would just make everybody happy. Jury is to appeal to the horny bastards and please me on a deep spiritual level. I've always thought she was the best modern Street Fighter character in terms of design. I really just want to see her in. This is a huge personal bias pick, but hey, I'm making the video. <laughs> and finally, Batsu. This is purely for the old guard. If you're not going to please the people like Maximilian Dude, who have championed Capcom for their entire lives with a new Rival Schools game, at the very least give them Batsu in Marvel 4. I think that would go a really long way in proving you still care about all of those classic and long dormant IPs Capcom has. And that pretty much puts a cap on my roster and game. Let me know what you think. When dealing with Capcom and Marvel, both of those brands have huge pantheons of characters that deserve spotlight. Honestly, I don't think there's any way to make every single person happy, but I certainly tried my best. If a character you love didn't make it in this concept, don't worry. I'm working on a follow-up DLC video with four years of post-launch support planned out. This roster has 52 characters. That's to make it bigger than Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which is a big selling point. And then after the first pack of DLC, it'll have the most characters out of any Marvel vs. Capcom game, which is huge, and then you can keep building on that and keep selling the game on a huge roster. However, I don't want this video to be too long, so subscribe and hit that bell for the next follow-up video with the DLC seasons fully fleshed out. For now, here's a cute little teaser image to whet your appetite, and make sure you don't miss the video. With all of that said, thank you guys so much for watching, I think it's really cool that some people will actually watch the videos I make for bullshit fun. I hope you guys like what I made, and I'll smell you guys later. So
solo, I'm on solo, I'm 